Oh, are you ready for a little factoring? I am. We're going to start uh, here with Daily 17, doing a little factoring when I have a single x squared. Sometimes people say this is factoring when a is equal to 1. Now, a, what's a? Well, yeah, that's uh, one of my initials, but anyways, a is going to be what we call the numerical value, the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared. So as you look at all of our examples here today, there is no number in front of the x squared on all 10 examples. So we know that is 1x squared. So a is equal to 1. We've got 1x squared. I have two other um, variable uh, values that I'm going to be looking at today. b is going to be the number in front of my x to the first power. So as I look at example 1, my b value is 9. Example 2, b is 6. And then finally, c is my integer numerical value at the end of the trinomial. So in example 1, c is 14. Example 2, c is 8. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work backwards from daily 16. Daily 16, we used our favorite four-letter F word. Not fart, of course, but foil, in which we multiplied first, outside, inside, last. We are going to work backwards today. I am going to give you a trinomial, one, two, three terms, and your job is to figure out what would be the two binomials, binomial one, binomial two, that I could multiply together in order to get to that trinomial. Not a crazy process, especially when we have a single x squared. So that's our goal today, as we said. We want to factor, that's reverse foiling, a trinomial into two binomials. So my setup, I'm always going to set up my two sets of parentheses to indicate where my binomials are. I am always today going to start my binomials with thinking, how do I get to 1x squared? Well, there's only one way to multiply two values together to get to 1x squared. 1x times 1x. Okay. What I need to do next now is follow the process in finding two numbers that multiply to equal my c value. That is the last number. So I need to find two numbers that, in this case, multiply to make 14. So thinking I could go, oh, 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. Okay, those are my two options. 1 times 14 or 2 times 7. The other prerequisite or requirement is that the two factors need to add to equal the B value, the middle number. So in this case, I want to figure out what numerical values multiply to make 14, and then add to make 9. So we said 1 and 14, 1 times 14 is 14. Does 1 plus 14 equal 9? No, it doesn't. Hopefully 2 and 7 works. 2 times 7 is 14, and yes, 2 plus 7 is 9. So I am going to use positive 2 and positive 7. Now, order does not matter. I could go x plus 7 and x plus 2. No problem. So what we're looking to do here is show that if I were to FOIL first, outside, inside, last, these two binomials, I would get to this trinomial. So I'll just show on this example, x times x, x squared, x times 7, 7x, 2 times x, 2x, and then 2 times 7 is 14. So as you look here, the 7x and 2x in the middle, yes, do make 9x. So x plus 2 times x plus 7 is my final answer. Again, I'm just showing the work here to uh, illustrate the process here so you can always check your work. We'll try to pick it up a notch here. Hopefully you've kind of got the gist of it. Again, I'm always going to set up my two binomials with x and x. Now I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to make c, which is 8, and then add together to make 6, 
Well, eight, I can have one and eight, or two and four. You should be able to hopefully see that, oh, one and eight makes adds to nine, but two and four does make six. So x plus two, x plus four. Done. Of course, you could have x plus four times x plus two. Again, flipping the order of the binomials, that will not uh, matter. All right, let's take a look at example three. Again, I'm setting up my two binomials, placing x in my first locations. So now I need two numbers that multiply to make six and then add to make seven. You might be thinking, oh, three and two. Three times two is six. Oh, but three plus two is five, not seven. Well, let me think. I think one and six are the only other factors. One times six is six. One plus six, seven. You got it. So x plus six, x plus one. And of course, you can flip-flop and have x plus one times x plus six if you'd like. All right, little curveball for you here. New type of example. Notice here my b value is negative, negative five. I need to find two numbers that multiply to make a positive 4, but then add to make negative 5. So we got to think. We need two numbers that multiply to make a positive, but add to make a negative. Well, think about it. A negative times a negative makes a positive, and then two negatives combined make a, another negative. So to get to 4, I can either go 2 times 2 or 1 times 4. 2 times 2, 4, but negative 2 and negative 2 make negative 5. So I need to go minus 4, minus 1. Negative 4 times negative 1, positive 4. Negative 4 plus negative 1, negative 5. All right, 4 down. Let's keep the party uh, going here. x times x will give me the x squared. Again, a positive n c value and a negative middle b value. In this case, hopefully you can see x minus 2, x minus 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. If you'd like x minus 2 times x minus 2, you can write this as x minus 2 times itself squared. Either way is correct. All right, example six. We need to find two numbers that multiply to make positive 12, but add to make negative seven. I think if we go negative four times negative three, we'll get positive 12, and then negative four plus negative three gives me negative seven. There's my factorization. Whew. All right, another new type here. Why is it new? Well, now both b and c are negative. So to get a negative product, I need to have one positive and one negative. Now here, the sign matters. Okay, you can't have, um, you know, if we did uh, with negative six, I think if I go negative 6, positive 1, 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, and then 1 plus negative 6, negative 6 and 1 is negative 5. So when you have 1 plus 1 minus, the order or the sign does matter. What I mean by that is if you had a positive 6 and negative 1, you would still get 6 and negative 1 as a product of negative 6 but positive 6 and negative 1 would give you a positive 5, and you need a negative 5 in the middle. So it matters the sign of your numbers. But of course, you could write it as x minus 6 times x plus 1. That's okay. But it does matter which number is positive and negative. All right, three to go. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 10, and then add to make negative 3. If we go minus 5 plus negative 5 times 2, negative 10, negative 5 plus 2, negative 10. All right, let's take a look at the last two here.
two numbers that multiply to make negative 20 and then add to make 8. Uh, let me think. Well, if I go positive 10 and negative 2, 10 times negative 2 is negative 20, and then 10 minus 2 is positive 8. Good. All right, last one. Notice here I have 1x squared minus 1x. Sometimes it's helpful to write in that negative 1, or if it's just plus x, plus 1x, minus 72. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to make negative 72, and then add to make negative 1. Now, a little hint, a little uh, help here. If you ever have a plus x or a minus x, uh, you always want to find here the two factors that are only one unit away from each other. So you think 72, oh, is it 24 and 3? No, those aren't one unit away. So hopefully you can find two numbers that are one unit away that make 72. And in this case, it happens to be 8 and 9. 9 times 8, 72. So you need the sum of those, the 9 and the 8, to end up being a negative 1. So you're going to want your 9 to be negative and 8 to be positive. Why is that? Well, negative 9 times 8, negative 72. Then negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1, or negative x. Have a little fun with that. Fly on. Have a groovy day.